with us the Infrared City team. Uh, Angelos, CEO, Juana, CPO, James, computational designer, Anastasia, machine learning and postdoc engineer. They will showcase how to use Speckle to empower AI-driven solutions. Welcome, guys. How are you? Hello. Can you hear us well? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, hi Sandra. How are you? Good, good. Uh, thank you. I'll just wait for you then to have your screen share ready, and uh, the stage is yours. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I ask everybody else to mute for a bit because there's a bit of noise coming here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, lovely. So, hello, everyone. Um, let me let me start sharing my screen. Okay. Can you please confirm that you can see the screen? Oana and yes, we can Hi. see it. Okay. All right, lovely. So, well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Angelos Kronis, uh, the CEO and one of the co-founders of Infrared. Um, um, together with Oana, Stasia, and James, we're going to present to you a little bit of a, a, you know, a, a little progress we've done of Who Speckle. On infrared. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what infrared is. And before I actually talk about infrared, let me talk about the, the problem at hand, uh, which we I think well know. Climate change is affecting us all, and I would like to remind us, you know, why we're doing everything. Um, I used to present uh, infrared and pitch infrared for for a while uh, using these figures from 2021 and how devastated uh, that year was for 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 climate change for cities. Uh, I'm from Greece, so I, I, I dated these images last last month with these ones from, from my home country. Um, within a month, Greece lost uh, about 2 billion square meters of land and, and 150,000 animals and 5% of its GDP. So like there is an actual problem that we we need to we need to think about and, and how it relates to cities and, and buildings and the architecture engineering construction industry is is very clear to all of us, I think. Um, just a couple of, of, of points here, like we all know these numbers, you know, 20, 50, 70 percent of us, or even more, uh, according to different sources, uh, will have to live in cities. Uh, Autodesk uh, says we'll have to build 13,000 buildings per day by then. Um, not sure how we will do that. Uh, and uh, still, buildings are the largest contributor to climate change. With it's, the number is not again like sort of like universal, but like at least 40 percent of, of annual uh, greenhouse emissions is contributed to the built environment. So. The, the thing that we all agree, I think, here is that we need to understand the impact that our buildings have on the climate and, and vice versa. So uh, how the climate will affect our buildings and our cities and our plants. So to do that, we need, as we all know, simulation. Uh, we need to integrate simulation. We need to be able to understand uh, the impact of every design decision. But the problem with simulation is that it is very time consuming. It's very expensive. It's not integrated. It needs a lot of expertise. So that is that is the reason. That's like the, the sort of like primary driver for for developing infrared. So infrared tries to solve the problem to make climate simulations accessible to everybody. Um, a very good example uh, of what we've been doing is uh, wind comfort. Uh, if you want to do a typical wind comfort simulation for pedestrian comfort uh, around, let's say, tall buildings, you might need up to three days uh, and and perhaps uh, thousands of years in 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 sort of like fees. Um, Infrared can predict the same result with about 90% accuracy in, in a second. And that's sort of like the, the groundbreaking uh, bit here. So it's like accurate uh, AI-driven simulations in real time. Um, this is, uh, for me, one of the most interesting images of this uh, of this project that we've been doing. Uh, actually studied at the Austrian Institute of Technology, so I'm really happy with presenting uh, right after Yosa uh, um, uh, and, and um, um, Vicky. So, um, on this sort of like image, you, you see on one side, you see a solar radiation simulation that's done with Ladybug. The other side, you see an infrared prediction. One takes like about 30 minutes, the other takes less than a second. So it's not just about like, you know, how very fast simulations uh, using AI, it's also about integration. So we've built infrared in a way that it is very openly integratable. Uh, so we, we're trying to offer a simulation as a service model. So what we've done is essentially taken thousands of simulations from hundreds of different cities. We've trained deep learning models, and we have like a backend that serves uh, simulation to um, different ways, like to a cloud app, 
through plugins that we're developing and that's a, essentially what we are like focusing a little bit on today or even uh, an api that we have and we are serving uh simulation as a, sort of like as a service to other others uh through that so i'm gonna show you like three examples very quickly of how we've used infrared in the past and then i'm gonna pass it on to oana james and stasia to, to talk about the speckle connection so but before i do that i want to do like a little bit of a trip on down down memory lane uh for some people this might be an, a familiar image for someone uh, for some others maybe not this is generative components this is like maybe 15 years ago uh it was the beginning of like uh let's say perhaps parametric generative design systems and uh, maybe more parametric than generative back then and and for me this was like the most interesting image i've i've found throughout these 15 years of trying to do uh integrate simulation this is essentially a gc Generative components to Ecotech Link that was developed by Kaustad the the by the by, back then 15 years ago. Uh, I was trying for like a week, I think, to connect through the DLLs, um, you know, Ecotech to to GC. I was failing uh, just to run a solar radiation simulation. We've progressed quite a lot since then, so we, we we've done a lot of progress, and today. We're able to integrate simulation in in many different ways. But I think uh, you know what we're trying to do with Infrared is like advance that that uh, step to do something a lot more uh, intuitive, a lot of like, uh, a lot more sort of um, tangible and, and real time perhaps. So this is what Infrared City is today. These are the, the different ways with, with which Infrared is working. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a mashup of the, of the three different sort of like approaches we've followed. This is uh, some snippets of the different uh, integrations through a web app that we've done some like dashboards, uh, um, we've done sort of like uh, integrations with with other software, and I'm going to show you like a little bit how it works. Um, this is the cloud app. Uh, you can actually use it on, on a web page, and you can just select the location. You're going to get OpenStreetMaps context. You can download. If you don't have any context, of course, you can connect your own context to it. And then once you have a bit of context, you can start setting your site, deleting the exi existing buildings, adding the different simulations um, you want to to run, like wind comfort wind speed, solar radiation, sunlight hours, et cetera. And then with a few um, sort of like uh, quick uh, quick uh, clicks, you can actually design some, some, something, something very simple massing and run a simulation. And here you can see actually almost real time, this is just three times faster and it's only the network connection that slows it down. A wind comfort simulation um, returned in, in seconds, wind speed, solar radiation and sunlight hours. So that's like essentially the power of, of infrared. And of course, you can just like manipulate buildings and very quickly get results. I'm not going to go uh, too 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 uh, uh, long for this. So a grasshopper uh, integration here, you can see, for example, you know, I've inter infrared integrated in grasshopper. There's a human UI interface as well. You can move around, let's say a point. You can create park, and then automatically with some generative uh, algorithmic um, uh, parametric design, you can actually generate form and immediately get simulation results. Again, this is wind comfort. Any of these simulations should take at least, let's say eight hours of just runtime, not to not to count, let's say meshing and and, uh, and other other things. So uh, just the ability to move around street, streets and move around buildings and like delete and add buildings and immediately get results is is for us what, what we think is kind of like groundbreaking here. Um, so this is Grasshopper plugin uh, for, for Infrared. And of course, as I said, we've done also an API, uh, an open API, which, which our users can actually um, uh, used to integrate uh, Infrared in their own, let's say, development. So this is Giraffe, and Giraffe has actually already integrated Infrared in, in their tool. And then here you can see, for example, when Infrared was still in AIT, uh, the AIT Wind Comfort, um, let's say, plugin there. And then you can see how um, we are serving some HTML results directly, uh, which are also interactive to, to Giraffe. And then um, very quickly, you can, again, manipulate form and, and see the results of the form. So. All of this sort of like uh, ability also gives you um, all of this sort of like real time simulation ability also gives you the ability to to, to do optimization tasks, run thousands of, of designs with uh, simulation results uh, embedded in them, and then actually have like a sort of like a performance driven optimization um, uh, process, which is um, again was not possible before because. You know, having to run a wind simulation, I mean, I've been trying to do that for years in my in my uh, research, uh, having to run a simulation for a whole week, you're not able to run a thousand different sort of like simulation results. So I'm going to stop it right here and I'm going to pass it on to Oana. Oana, please, because I can see you just tell me what to go next. Yeah, uh, and we'll just say next again. So uh, fantastic. Thank you, Andros, for the introduction. So what we wanted to do here is to 
um, use Speckle to really um, allow us to expand very fast on our open integration uh, concept and therefore serve real-time simulations um, very quickly into the design environment that the, our end user is, is used to um, in their workflow. Um, next, Angelis. So for this, of course, we, we didn't do it alone. We put together a, a small team, um, complete with um, our um, collaborators that we've, of course, worked with before. Um, so, uh, Stasia, James, do you want to say a few words uh, before uh, about yourself, just very quickly? Yes, hi. Uh, I'm James, and I'm a recent graduate of EAC. I completed my master's in advanced architecture there um, earlier this year. Now I'm, with, I'm a computational designer. And uh, I'm Stasia. I am a machine learning and full stack engineer, and I build tools for AC industry. Fantastic. Thank you, Angelus. We can move to the next one. Um, so, yeah, beyond just uh, finding a way to. Uh, James, can you mute? Thanks. So, beyond just finding a way to um, serve our AI powered simulation um, uh, insights into beam modeling environment or, or into Revit in this case, we wanted to really follow the workflow that our um, users have described to us and, and kind of follow along with their team um, division and their work division. Um, you can move on to the next one. Therefore, we, we uh, ran a process uh, with multiple um, points of, of sending uh, data back and forth between um, Grasshopper and, and Dynamo with the intent, the, fi the final intent to um, obtain the results of a simulation directly into uh, Revit as your main um, beam modeling development. Um, so now James and Stasia will, will um, show you the video that we, um, that we created, the, the video of this um, integration and uh, tell you very quickly our, our final conclusion. Right, so uh, one of the one of the best ways that, or one of the um, best uses of Speckle so far is being able to take that context from Rhino, and then uh, we were able to send that directly to Revit um, to use in our model, and then you can quickly design your building that you have, and then you can run the analysis using the infrared API. And send that data back to back to Revit. Um, and from here, you can make certain changes in the building, and then you can send this back to Rhino and rerun the analysis, and then send this back to Revit. And um, so the and, thing uh, to do here is by um, sending single mesh with linked with many values. So a single mesh um, with the values for each face, and then by deconstructing uh, uh, this mesh in Dynamo and then linking the values to the to the different values to the um, different indicators. Uh, one of the points of this project was uh, to understand how the infrared plugin would work in Revit without doing the actual development. So how would the user experience be? How uh, do I could look like without doing the heavy development first? And uh, uh, Speckle offers a great opportunity to quickly prototype and build a POC like we did quickly sending, sharing the information between uh, Rhino, Revit, and infrared web app, while being able to access the 3D data and models everywhere, both uh, via the infrared web app, via the APA in uh, Rhino and uh, Revit. Mm. And uh, yeah, for us, it was uh, a great tool that um, allowed a smooth interaction while talking. Excellent. So. 
Uh, last but not least, maybe I, I jump in here. So we just raised uh, our pre-seed round um, uh, and we're hiring. So if you're interested, like to send us uh, a, an email um, and uh, yeah, we, we're going to post the, the three roles that we're having today um, on LinkedIn. So follow us on, on LinkedIn, follow us on, on um, sort of like all the different social media or like go to our website and subscribe to our waiting list because we will soon be releasing the first infrared commercial version. So yeah, uh, join us. That's all for us. Thank you. Thank you, team. There is one question um, I will bring on stage for you. Lovely. Oh, sorry. This is actually not a, <laughs> this is a, a question that I can also answer. I OK, think. go for it. Yes. <laughs> Or I'll just leave uh, it for you to I answer. See a, I see a question from Marvin. Uh, I was interested about bigger scale simulations. I wonder if this is live. Um, I, I'm not sure if I understand correctly if, if infrared is live or if, if infrared is like usable right now. Yes, it is. Uh, if you are interested, do contact us. Um, uh, I'm going to post here sort of like our. Um, Sort of like uh, website, our, our sort of like uh, email address, so you can you can contact us directly there. There's another question that I see from uh, David, right? How was the model trained regarding the climate data? Was it trained with specific climate zones or some representational representation of data, for example? So, like essentially, uh, wind comfort um, and wind speed doesn't need uh, specific climate data because you're training, you're, you're you're passing a wind speed and wind direction to the model, so. You're, you're agnostic to um, the climate data of a specific zone. So every time you want to run that simulation, you'll have to actually do um, pass it a uh, wind speed and wind, uh, wind direction. So the, uh, the sort of like uh, solar radiation uh, um, models have been trained with, with local climate data. So we, we've trained a few, uh, a few cities, like about 100 cities already, but like we're, we're um, we're going further with that uh, as we go. So yeah, let's, I hope that answers the question. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll see you guys very soon. Lovely. Thank Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.